The Seattle Mariners made an interesting move today as they signed former Nationals outfielder Victor Robles to a major league contract. He's being paid $2.65 million in total. The Mariners will have to pay about $740,000 of that. It's a low risk, potentially high upside move, but in all reality, Jonathan Class A is not ready for the big leagues is what the Mariners are saying. They sent him back down to, tri to AAA, signed Victor Robles to fill that gap until when Jorge Polanco comes back from the injured list. Victor Robles has been with the Nationals for seven years now. Back in 2017, when he was first called up to the big leagues, he was the Nationals' number one overall prospect. He has the upside there. He's got a lot of speed. He won a World Series with the Nationals back in 2019, but since then he's been plagued with injuries and has struggled. And again, recently the Nationals just up and released him. Now he did just turn 27 years old. He's not in his low to mid 30s where he should be plateauing and heading downward in his career. We'll see if the Mariners can potentially do something and utilize the ability that he does have. But what makes this interesting is that by adding Victor Robles, that now gives the Mariners five outfielders in Julio Rodriguez, Luke Rayley, Mitch Haniger, Dominic Hanzone, and then Victor Robles. That would now give the Mariners three outfielders that are right-handed hitters and two outfielders that are left-handed hitters. Adam Jude states that Victor Robles will play mainly against left-handed pitchers, but it's intriguing because you look at splits and uh, Luke Rayley so far this year against left-handed pitching, 22 plate appearances, 20 at-bats. Luke Rayley is batting 300 with a 500 slug an 864 OPS against left-handed pitching. Dominic Canzone has not been given any opportunity against left-handed pitching. He's had just five plate appearances, four at-bats. He has not gotten a hit off of a left-handed pitcher so far this year. But Luke Rayley, he's been on a tear the past month after a slow March in April in which he batted 218 with a 505 OPS. During May, he had a 290 batting average with an 828 OPS. So far to start June in two games, He's hit two bombs already this, this month with a 400 batting average and a 2.225 OPS. Now Luke Rayleigh is performing against left-handed pitching. Mitch Hanniger in the same light is not performing against left-handed pitching. In 63 plate appearances, 59 at-bats, he's got a 153 batting average and a 359 OPS. He has been struggling against left-handed pitching. He's got a, a reverse split to where he's hitting righties much better than he's hitting lefties. But even against righties, he's batting 250 with a 747 OPS at this point in the season. So with this type of move, if Victor Robles is, is going to be hitting against left-handed pitching, is Victor Robles more so going to be replacing Mitch Hanniger against left-handed pitching? Bat Luke Rayley, Julio Rodriguez, and then Victor Robles against lefties. And then you got Luke Rayley, Julio Rodriguez, and Mitch Haniger against right-handed pitching. Now, as I said, this is a low risk in that they only are $740,000 into Victor Robles, potentially high upside. Again, he was a top prospect. Last year in 2023, Victor Robles did bat 299 with a 750 OPS, no home runs, eight stolen bases. And against right-handed pitching, he hit 270 with the 695 OPS versus left-handed pitching, which again, the, the pitching that he's actually going to be facing this year. He batted 364 with an 872 OPS. That was in 40 plate appearances and 33 at-bats. But at this point in the game, in my opinion, Victor Robles might just be another bench option for Scott's service. Once Jorge Polanco is back from the injured list, depending on how Ryan Bliss is doing, they could option him back to AAA instead of getting rid of Victor Robles immediately. Kind of see how that plays out. Again, my opinion right now, start Luke Rayleigh in the outfield every single day. Julio Rodriguez, Luke Rayleigh. Then you got Dominic Hanzone, Mitch Haniger in right field. Luke Rayleigh's on a tear. We saw his potential last year with the Rays when he finally got playing time every day. I've been saying it consistently, and I'm sure you've heard it elsewhere, but how can you expect true contributions from guys when they're not allowed everyday reps? It doesn't matter if there's a left-hander on the mound that day. Luke Rayleigh is hitting them, and he should be playing against them. Victor Robles will be joining the Seattle Mariners for their series in Oakland starting tomorrow against the A's. They have three games against the A's before heading out to Kansas City, three games against the Royals before heading back home for their next home series against the White Sox. The Mariners will have to make a big splash at the, at the trade deadline this year, and we're getting closer and closer every day to when one of those big acquisitions will be made. So far this year, the Seattle Mariners are 25th in the league in OPS, over the last 15 days, they're 27th in OPS. Their pitching has been one of the best, if not the best, in baseball. 
The Seattle starting rotation has now produced 37 quality starts this season, which is the most in baseball. Eight out of the last nine starts have been quality starts, including six during the last homestand. And Mariners starters have held opponents to a 145 batting average with three walks, one hit by pitch during the first time through the lineup over their last nine games. The Mariners fired their offensive coordinator in Brant Brown last week, potentially the, the scapegoat in the situation to where the Mariners yet again are not producing on offense again this year. So if someone had to go, I'm curious what the offensive coordinator role really looked like and what their plan was before that. But at some point you have to go out and add true impact to this lineup to support the best pitching staff in baseball when fully healthy. The Mariners are 28 and nine when scoring first in a game and 27 and three. That's over a 900 winning average when scoring four or more runs a game. You put together an offense that scores four or more runs a game. That pitching staff is not allowing you to lose the game. You have over a 900 winning average. Victor Robles certainly is not an impactful type move. That move should be coming soon. But for now, we'll have to hope that the Mariners can continue to extend their lead in the AL West with these series against the A's and the Royals. The Royals are going to be a tough team. The A's have been a stingy team so far this year. They will have four games against the White Sox when they do come back to Seattle. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this Victor Robles signing and let me know which impactful bats you think the Mariners should go get at the trade deadline. And for now, go check out one of these videos right here.